Hey everyone. I think we're ready to get started. Uh, we've got Emily Selward next. Uh, title is Survival is an Achievement, Tactical Ways to Keep User Groups Alive Under Strain. Uh, Emily is an AI security and privacy tech lead who's going to discuss some practical ways to develop and foster user groups. Thank you. Um, so this is the right place for you if you're curious about what I have to say on this topic because you know everything and you want to tell me about all the other ideas I should have later. Also, if you don't know anything, you're not a community management person, you're just trying to get started, you don't know what's wrong with your user group or where to begin. This is very much like a no experience needed talk about things that I have found value in. So there is no rubric, there's no rhyme or reason to this besides what I have found works as someone who's not in the profession of community management. Um, I'm a scientist, I am in security and privacy. We're not known for necessarily being like, you know, great speakers or leaders of people, but here we are anyway. So if you fit into that bucket in any of those categories, I welcome you. Um, so today we're gonna be talking about uh, disruption to AWS user groups. I'm a community organizer for the Portland AWS user group, have been a speaker since 2020, have been on the steering committee since 2020 or 2021. I don't remember at this point. Um, I do community outreach for the Girl Scouts. I have a Girl Scout troop. I have done internal community management um, side of desk at Amazon, other places, that kind of thing, just trying to get people to do stuff that's like normal that I need them to do. And so I've kind of put together what I think is good enough, how I do it um, from the perspective of like, let's just get stuff done. So this is really gonna be about the AWS user group story, um, how to get to good enough with the user group. There's gonna be a little bit of a bias because the AWS user group in Portland is largely a speaking community. But if you have a user group for a technology, like AWS or a group of people that you're wrangling for a subject or a theme might help you as well. How to help your unique user group. I have a handout. I'm not gonna read you a bunch of slides. We're gonna actually just write things down and do it. And if you find value, that's great. You can also leave it any time, I'm not counting. Um, how to know you need help and then how to be kind to yourself. That's the smallest part of it because there's a lot of logistical stuff in the middle that's like the tactical tips. Okay. So when you leave, you will have a working definition of good enough. You will have some tips. You'll have a handout if you want it. Um, you'll know some signs that you need to get some help because you'll have gone through all these like kind of very specific action-oriented discussions. And you'll be like, wow, I'm missing X, Y, and Z, so I need to go figure that out. Um, and then hopefully you'll know that you are people too, if I'm just jumping to the end, you are your users as well. So like you're also a person, when to take a break, how to step out, um, there's your permission to do that. So we're gonna start with the user group in Portland. So Portland AWS user group are one of the largest, one of the oldest user groups in the AWS user group community. Um, I am on the uh, steering committee internal at AWS. Not every user group has a steering committee. I think this is one of the like secrets to why we have been able to revive it. But during COVID-19, um, and this is, you know, you can go look at all the meetup groups and see how many activities they're running. All of our in-person meetup groups basically died. Like, cause guess what? Like everybody was fearing for their lives for very reasonable reasons, people weren't coming out. And so a lot of user groups went online. We went online. We had some really successful, like awesome events. But ultimately, it takes more than like a WebEx, web, webinar, WebEx situation to maintain a user group, to keep people excited and enthusiastic about a community. So I'm going to start with what worked uh, to kind of revive it. Um, having a steering committee in the first place and enough people that there were some of us still around after the languishing. Everybody was inside for COVID. All of these different groups died. People didn't want to go out. People didn't have a lot of ideas of how to engage organically anyway. Everybody was still passionate about these things, but their attention was placed in other places. Um, so we had a lot of folks on the steering committee. It's like a relatively large, like 10 or so people, like on a mailing list, 13 or 14 at this point, I think. But um, 
you know, at least a few of us were around and willing when a couple of community members said, hey, we'd like to do some activities again. Um, having an available backbench of activities. So like we participate, we work with other local groups, sometimes cross promote activities that we think might be relevant. We have helpers who don't regularly engage, but like will send us a talk if that's interesting. Uh, we have a strong opinionated vision on this is what our user group is and isn't, which is really important to have. On the handout, you'll see that. And then later there's one slide. I don't know if we're gonna post these, I assume we are, but um, uh, let me know if we aren't, I'll give them to you. But like we set together like, this is what we do and don't do. But other than that, we're not too picky. Um, we had the existing momentum. We had the good fortune of having a 2000 plus person basically mailing list after everything died during COVID. A passionate bunch of organizers who came in. Um, and then something in it for the user group. So there's always something in it. Your user group's always gonna have some reason people want to be there. Um, whether that's they want to practice leading people they want to give a talk if you're like a speaker oriented talk series user group. Um, sometimes it's they want to sell their stuff. So be mindful to have a policy around that. AWS user groups are not for people to pitch their technical products and we don't, you know, like allow people to do that. <laughs> but um, these are just some of the kind of intangibles that help make it work. And what went wrong, really, it was unavailable to be in person. We couldn't really get volunteers rewards. The schedule fell apart. We lost ability. Like our main leader kind of wandered off and had a new job and things like that. So um, it really fell apart in a lot of ways. So coming back to this idea, enthusiasm is your most precious resource. A user group is people. Nobody cares about your technology products. They don't care about your awesome code. They don't care about your solution if they feel downtrodden and not valued. And so if you want to know what good enough user groups are, it's a bunch of people. We were actually able to grow numbers, not that that's the most important thing, right? Like just getting a bunch of people to say, hey, yeah, I'll click on your link. That doesn't mean you have an active, vibrant user group. User groups, this is my opinion, opinion's my own. A reason needs to be there for them to continue to exist, whether that's like we want to keep working with people around this technology. We want to keep meeting others in the community. For me personally, I like to know that I have some kind of job security because I live in Portland. I'm going to be honest about that. I like meeting people who don't work at AWS because it's a cool place to work in a lot of ways, but like I live in Portland. This is where we want to live. I'm not leaving. So I want to know everyone else who doesn't work at AWS. Um, other people have this motivation as well. Um, consistent engagement, right? Like, are you meeting regularly? How do you know, right? Active participation, people actually come to you, they want to help. And then you're humble. Like, you're not like worthy, best and only. Like, nobody else can have ideas but us. Um, you can really, in my view, measure whether your user group has enthusiasm based on a few of these things, like if you set a whole bunch of KPIs back off of this and like measure how much money you're making because all these things exist or whatever, that's your business. We don't, as a user group, do that. But um, if you don't have these things, people will not care as much, in my experience. And then the people who still care about what brought them in, whether it was their friend, they came to one of the talks that you had, they liked and like they forked your code, like whatever it is, um, they're just gonna wander off because you don't pay them to be there. They don't have to be there. Enthusiasm is the heart of your community. So um, because this is like 101, you don't know this about community management, right? Like maybe you don't, right? Um, people come because you have a vibrant, emotionally safe space. The, my favorite meetup is not my own meetup, actually. It's the regular RainSec security, like networking, like go have a beer with security professionals on the last Tuesday of the month. We meet at Lucky Labs, right? Um, everybody just can go there and be themselves, right? So one of the things that we tried to do with the Portland AWS user group when we revived it was put together like time outside the talk so that people could talk to each other because that was important to us, right? Um, consistency, showing up as much as possible. You don't have to be the best, but you 
also if you're trying to build or even sustain a user group it's really really hard to wander off and guess what we did it like more than once like the path to back from covid is not easy like a lot of our user groups just flat out completely died and have not ever come back but uh we do have an event coming up on the 14th about machine learning governance i'm going to post it today uh but showing up as much as possible pick a date this is the date and time that i will meet with these people last tuesday of the month rain Sec meets right um you have new members you have old members right if all you have is new members and all your old members like don't like it anymore you're just going to be constantly churning people who like don't care if it's only old members why is that true is there like a weird vibe like new people don't feel welcome enough right you can't build enthusiasm just on like only one type of person um and then finally like the the humility like it does not work in my experience to have one like rock star person just be like this is how we're doing it this is what we're doing those people over there it doesn't matter like we're gonna go faster than what's possible right it does not work to say hey we're the best at everything no other group can exist i have not found that to be useful because if you become competitive about who's got what members and what things people can like or not like and you know who's gonna grow their member base or who's gonna have the most participants in their talks or whatever you're losing sight on the enthusiasm piece like you're losing sight of the reason to be there and user groups at least aws user groups and maybe yours too are not about fighting for mind share right it's okay that your user group is a average size and it's just plugging along you don't have to add new members all the time you are not bad at having a user group if it's not exploding with growth those are things that you know by and large if you're building a community for marketing purposes to sell something really important metrics to track how much platform growth do we have how many users are using the thing but for a user group you really just need a core group of folks that actually care to sustain it that you build from and it's really hard to kind of balance that humility piece of it so okay this is kind of the meat of the talk I have a handout. We're going to talk about figuring out how your user group works. We talked a little bit already about like enthusiasm is your most precious resource, how, how to think about not crushing it. Now we're going to talk about how it works. And I have a handout. Um, and Chris is going to help me hand it out. Uh, you can keep it. It's for you. If you like it, don't like it, that's fine. I forgot to put my name on it. So you won't remember where it came from unless you write down where you got it from. And it's not online, but I'll share it. So this is a moment where I'm forgiving myself for not doing a good enough job marketing myself. Uh, but generally speaking, write your name on work you did, you know, and build your brand that way. Like, again, uh, mea culpa, I didn't kill more trees after I learned that. But anyway, so a couple of slides um, of things that I think are the most important things to remember. Um, and then we're going to go through some of this. Um, the reason I didn't hand it out at the beginning is because I just didn't want to like have everybody reading it because I know I would. Um, leadership organization stewardship. So there is a group of people who help you think about how your user group should be run. They don't always do everything. They're not the people opening and unfolding the tables. Maybe they are, maybe they aren't. But there's like five or so people in your community active users, maintainers, whoever it is, like the maintainers, in my opinion, opinions of my own, don't have to do all the work of also managing the community. It's okay to like let somebody who's like, I'm great at project and program management. Did we run out? Okay, sorry. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we'll figure out how to print more. Um, I work down the street, so I can go run and grab some. But um, it's okay that like, maintainers don't do the community work it's okay that someone who's not like an awesome coder or like building technical product like also helps out one of the things that's great about our user group is one of the organizing committee members has no aws technology experience and just likes people and she's the one who can make us like marketing posters and flyers and like pictures and like call people and that's great it's okay to have different roles but roughly speaking 
you don't want to just have like one person who's shouldering the whole thing on their back, right? If the people who decide how it should work, the people who routinely connect and like kind of organize events, and the people who like answer all of the emails or messages or like chatter a lot in whatever channels you have or whatever, if all of that is one person, you need to think about how can I quickly get a little bit more thoughtfulness around how to like move the big beast of my user group, right? I'm not going to give a talk about the the person just trying to performance tune their database who saved all of us, because I'm sure somebody else is giving that talk. But also that shouldn't have to happen because an individual maintainer shouldn't be propping up the planet, right? So that's a sign, right? If you don't have like a good handful of roles, probably 15, 20 people that you know are in your community, that's a sign that you need to think a little bit about like, let's pick it up, right? So also, Having explicit expectations, all of these leaders set the tone. Okay, so very early on, we were like, okay, well, we're gonna all be together. And we set the tone on like boring stuff. Like how do we make people feel safe? How do we make sure that we're not just shilling products to people? How do we say thank you for people who buy us beer without saying like, we thank company X for giving us a whole bunch of pizza money that they earned with their distributed magical platform. Um, like, you know, set some rules. So you'll have some leadership, you'll set some rules. Um, and then in terms of pulling it all together, um, we have a couple of options. If you don't want to spend time doing Q&A and working on filling out your user group sheet or talking through this, we cannot do that. But the main bulk of the time is to do that, to go over it so that we can bounce ideas off each other. Um, so anyone opposed, strongly opposed? Okay, all right, so let's start with leadership, organizers, and stewardship. Does anybody have questions, ideas, examples that they want to share about like how they are successfully or unsuccessfully pulling together some people who are like your steering committee who help you think about it, the people who organize events, and the people who like talk to everyone and do the day-to-day -day, like making it fun to be there. Any ideas? Brave people? You got it? You all feel good about it? Okay. So um, who runs it, right? As you're filling this out now or later, you don't have to, um, but if you're gonna recycle it, give it back. I'll, I think some people didn't get one. Um, think about who runs it and why they run it. If there's nobody that runs it but you, uh, talk to me later about why that is even, or like somebody here, like somebody who's been a community member longer, right? Um, of some community, because probably they have some ideas for you. Um, but who runs it is important and then why they run it. Um, I don't get paid a variable salary. I have no reason to be here. I'm not gonna get any like marketing qualified leads or sales qualified leads or bonus or compensation or even a gold star to do this. I just care about people. That's why I do it. But it matters very much why people do it. If you've got a user group leader who is somebody who wants to build their base of people they know in a certain community that they also happen to be a salesperson in. That is actually fine. But making sure that you know that like all of the people in your leadership group are not just people trying to be there for one reason or another, like whether that's like they only care about the community so they're not gonna think about like how to grow it, how to build it, how to keep it on track with what the point of the user group is, or they are only there because they, want to sell things to people or they're only there because they want to be like networking for jobs, another passion of mine, uh, even though I've been at AWS six and a half years. Um, like figure out how to have a balanced group. Does your leadership of your community actually represent not just like, you know, a bunch of people, but are there like any ways that they are diverse? This can really help you a lot. Um, you know, when COVID happens, one of your your co-members is like, you know, an executive assistant. Somebody is like, uh, you know, I work in 
consulting. I'm a scientist, right? Like, so I go help people with their R&D programs um, and the security of them. Uh, like, there's lots of different perspectives. You want to have a lot on there. So the why really matters. So it's not just who, but it's also why. Uh, that can tell you early if there's going to be issues. Okay. Outreach and member management. Anyone have any questions about, there's four questions on here. Uh, where are you platformed? Why are you platformed there? Are you indexed across other groups? And how do you solicit membership? Anyone have stories, questions? What I mean by platformed is how do you talk to people? Are you on Google groups? Are you on Meetup? Like what is this, like the central hub of stuff? There were slides for this, but then I was like, this is a boring talk and deleted a bunch of them. So like when I'm talking about platformed, how do you know how many members you have? Is it a slide deck that you like constantly, like it's mission critical to your user group to update the slide deck? This is a real thing that people do, it's fine. But it might be easier to use software for this. There's like Meetup, there's like Google Groups. Those are the two best ones. There's other ones too, but like those are honestly the best ones, in my opinion. It's okay to be wrong. I'm okay with being wrong. Please tell me if there's better ones. But Google Groups and Meetup are easily the best for like, where are my members? Where do I put a document everyone needs to see? Um, you know, there's GitHub as well. Like everybody can be a contributor on GitHub, but it's a little bit challenging sometimes to use projects or to manage through there without a bunch of plugins or other stuff. So when I'm talking about memory management, that's what I mean by platforms. Other questions? Yeah. I like this question very much. We do not have term limits, but I'm looking for more organizers. So hit me up if you want to be an AWS user group organizer. And the reason for this is because, um, first of all, my recommendation is having the same people forever BDFL only works for some cases. For some things where you want to have like a user group that you know can grow over time, like as my career has changed, as some of the other organizers' careers have changed, we have less time to invest in our work for free passion project. Nobody else on the committee right now has any incentive to be there, right? And if you're like actually like a community like dev like developer advocate, community manager role, this is good. Like if you're a marketer, if you're a salesperson, if you're like a program or product manager, if you're just looking to get into any of those roles, managing a user group is a lot like managing any of those things. So uh, my advice on the subject is if you're strained to get anybody to help with you, which is kind of the thrust of this, take whoever is helpful. Uh, and I, by that, I mean, don't take a hundred people and then nobody does anything. And then you're just managing a hundred people's stuff, but, uh, try to change it out if you can and refresh to create like diversity of at least experiences and interests and reasons to be there. So did that answer the question? Thank you. Yeah. Question on you go through that diverse of especially younger developers right now. This is like almost like a discord session. So uh, the reason I can't use Discord well is because I'm old, although for the Girl Scouts, we use Discord. And I'm not even that old, guys. Like, it's fine. But, like, there's too many chat rooms. I'm confused. Um, but if you want to use Discord, Discord's also really popular. Um, Google Groups, I'm going to – actually, I should probably add a Discord instead of a Google Group. So I was like, well, I sure need to get more young folks engaged in Meetup. Thank you for helping me with my user group. Yes. I'm at a university, just like a time running. Uh -huh. There's a lot of ways to self host um, other repositories like Google, XMCC, or Matrix. Help source the source of proprietary information. So, does this kind of like get towards your question? So, I would think to this point of it is uh -huh. I don't think I would ever use Discord. But the platform that 
Luma, I have not used. So, um, I like this very much as an idea. I will say that Meetup, because it's older, has a lot of hook-ins to a lot of other things and it's pretty widely understood. So this is like kind of in my like in my head criteria of how things work. Like we're not starting a Usenet forum. We I I know that we would love to, but we can't. Like um I'm also struggling to manage community through Discord because we work with children in the Girl Scouts and there's really no way to validate that anyone is who they say they are. And so like nagging people to not talk about the details of children and then like making sure that everybody's actually a girl scout is a moderation problem for discord so this is a very much like think very carefully about where you platform yourself but if you're not platform yourself somewhere and, I, and by that i mean like a normal existing tool for this purpose that you have looked at that a good amount of people use just like pick one it's fine but this is a good question as well um, we have 17 minutes left, which is good. We have a good time and I'll be around. So, um, I want to talk about for communication and meetup logistics, the biggest thing about enthusiasm is consistency and mea culpa. I'm not always the most consistent person. Uh, but when it comes to consistency, I put a note in there, like have a consistent time and location that you're going to either meet or do something or whatever. This is really, it creates a sense of safety for people like, oh yeah, I could go to that thing. I wonder what's on at that time. So we picked second Wednesdays for ours. Um, and then because of everybody's schedules and lives, don't always fill the speakers or don't always have a room for it. And then other people can't come, but like we're working through the very important process of being consistent. Um, and then cross promoting, if you don't know what cross promoting is, that's like, does anyone else help you tell people your user group exists? So um, same with index with other groups, who are your friends, right? So, um, in the V2 of this, which I will make and put somewhere, who are your friends is really important. Like, cause you're a user group, you're people, right? So like, there's all this stuff of like, there's the technology AWS. It's totally irrelevant that AWS exists as you know, like I love my check coming in. Right. But this is not a talk about AWS. So talk using AWS user group as an example, whether it's a user group of like Android developers, or it's a user group of like people like knitting, like it's a user group of absolutely anything. Like it's about engagement with the subject and the people. And so um, having a consistent place for the people to meet or talk to each other, if it's an all online group uh, is very important. Um, and then again, here's the bias for speakers. So we've been doing a speaker oriented group. So, um, you know, like figuring out from your user group what's been done in the past, like what kinds of talks have been given, what does an abstract look like, do you keep that anywhere, and then also what's the audience look like, what does any space that you want to use look like. Knowing those kinds of things is, like if you don't know how to organize things, I remember very early days, I was like, oh, well we need to have a talk. Okay, well, yeah, that's great, but it's not just somebody shows up with a slide deck and you're good. Like you have to have a talk, you have to tell people that a talk will happen, you have to tell them what it's about in a way that they can engage with that's appealing. You have to know where you're going, how will they get in the building, is it ADA accessible? Like, are we masking, for example? Where is it physically located? Where will they park? Like, those are things that are details that are very important. And if you're someone who is not naturally gifted in coordinating, these things you might not think about. So that's why the questions uh, we talked about, like speaker rules, code of conduct for the group. Um, and then there's an example at the bottom of what the community is like. This is for you to take and look at. And then you can copy the structure and format. Like what are people like in your user group? So for Portland, like we have a history of tech, technical excellence and innovation and community organization act, activism. If your user group is geographically located, it's important to know who is there, right? 
And this will help you when you're talking to get people to come to your group. And you can, they'll be like, oh yeah, like I might come speak at your meetup. What is it like there? Right. Oftentimes, like very experienced speakers will be like, "Okay, what's the audience like? What do they want to hear about? Who are they? And so as you're figuring out how to organize and think through events and, you know, community management and keeping things together and like managing the whole group of folks, knowing who they are in general, broad brush is very valuable because I've sent this paragraph to like so many people like I've sent all of this stuff to so many people and been like would you like to speak at my meetup group copy paste right I do the same for like how do I publish an event on meetup I have a whole little kit for that where it's like, here's what the cover slide will look like. Here's It needs an abstract this and that. I have an email template I use that's not even covered in this quick reference, but this is more about like, what's your community like? Um, but like all that kind of logistical stuff, the more you can automate that, and by that I mean like write it down somewhere. It doesn't need to be like magical technology-based automation. Um, the, the easier it'll be to manage your user group. And when it's easier to manage your user group, other people will help you more, right? Like if you have specific tasks for them to do that they can feel like they can help with, um, it's a big deal. Other questions? Yes. This one is hard for me, but I can tell you. This is why you want salespeople in your user group leadership. It's okay with rules to have sales and marketing people. Like a lot of people are like, oh, I hate sales and marketing people. They are the best people. They know everyone. They know everyone. And they can be like, I'm going to call up Jim Bob and be like, like he's got a conference room. And then great, you have a conference room down too, right? This is why you need diversity. I am not good at finding a space, but I do have access to the AWS like lobby area before 5 p.m., which is like an okay space. Uh, this is where you want your sales, marketing, community management people on the board of your user group. And I'll call it the board or the steering committee or like they're just your friends. But it's okay. Here's your permission. Go make a friend who's in these areas because guess what? They love to help because then they can say they helped. And for their metrics, that is valuable. So you're not harming them. It's actually great. They love it. I, I had to learn that. But... <laughs> So other things are universities sometimes have spaces, libraries sometimes have spaces. Um, these are harder spaces sometimes to get and to manage than just having a friend help you out. Um, and the reason is that if it's freely available to the entire community, there's probably a lot of paperwork to fill out. So, but if your buddy has a conference room, there's usually no paperwork. So that's a great question. Any other questions? And paperwork can be fine. It's just not my favorite. Yes. Yeah, so at our user group meetups, a variety of things can happen. This is a great question. Um, a, User group meetup for us, we start with like, like just like brass tacks. We arrive a little bit early. We set up like some water and like tea and coffee. Like we don't have money, but sometimes people give us things and like I can give them the AWS office tea and coffee for free. It's allowed. It is. It's per I, I checked. Right. So um, they can come, they can sit in like our lobby area or like wherever you're at. It's nice to have a refreshment basic hospitality stuff, right? It's nice to have a refreshment, even if it's just water, or to have thought about it. You know, where are the bathrooms? Where's the water? Tell people when they get there, this is what's up. Have a sign or whatever. Good signage. Um, I like to let people mingle a little bit. So people who are late, it's okay, right? So I post the time that the mingling starts at, and then I also post like sub point when the talk starts. So then people can come and mingle and then the talk starts and then I like we try to leave on time because it's more respectful that way. These are things that people care very much about. I'll introduce the speaker just like Danielle did here. 
like nobody cares that much about my life yet. I'm excited to meet all of you, but like you, we don't need the whole long thing. Have a reasonable amount of talking and engagement, right? Like you're not here to learn like advanced te techniques and community management. You're here because something about this appealed to you because you maybe don't know something, right? So I scheduled this intentionally so that it was like lots of Q&A um, and lots of me saying it's okay to not be good at this. Um, then usually we wrap up and then after hours, it's nice sometimes to take the speaker out, especially if they've flown in. Um, it's considered polite to pay for it. Like the etiquette is to pay for your speakers if you possibly can. Um, or at least give them like a free pass or like a, a swag bag or whatever. Um, if you can't put them up, be upfront about that. Um, and it's nice after the fact as well to not just rush everybody to the next thing, but to have like a little in between time. Um, so that way people who have maybe a disability or they're pregnant or like whatever reason they frequently need to use the bathroom, they don't have to miss a lot of things. Um, normal people like me who have been pregnant before who need to use the bathroom a lot don't have to miss a lot of things. Um, I'm, I'm disabled in other ways, but, um, being very mindful to like the the human animal part and having a little bit of talking is like the best conferences or just have at this time there is food come hang out also the best so did that answer it okay Yeah, no, thank you for that. Um, I hope it's helpful because I was this is a little bit of a tentative talk pick for me. I'm like, I wonder if there's other people who were bad at this also for a long time or like who just didn't know. Um, a lot of working groups that I'm in consist of people who have already been in working groups, so they already know the vibe, right? But I remember back when I was trying to start a speaker series, um, you know, for my like a company that I worked at, um, all the developers hated my team and that was fair. And um, we won't get into it, but like, I was like, well, we don't have anything we can do to fix the problem, but maybe we can go talk to them. So I set up like a speaker series and I had to learn all of this. Like, how do you record a talk? How do you put a blue jeans recording in a folder that other people can get to it? And so hopefully this has been useful for you to like learn from my bumping into walls experience and also hear that there's other people who are bumping into walls as well. Um, great questions. Happy to help. Um, I got a couple more slides. Um, getting help is good, actually. This is a good thing. This is like kind of the third point, right? How to know you need help. Um, if you're going through your sheet um, and you're like, I don't have any of this, go talk to somebody. Anybody who's running a user group, anybody who's done project management, program management, sales, marketing, they do this stuff all the time. Um, anyone you know who just like works with people, like a librarian is a good example, right? Like anyone who works with people as part of their job can help you with this. It does not need to be like a maintainer of a like open source package actually, like it's fine. Um, so if people don't seem happy and you just feel like they're not happy, you don't need to like bullet point be like the numbers and whatever, you can just like go ask somebody, hey, can I get your feedback? Um, I want to get more engagement with my community. I, I don't think people are as happy to be there. Can you help me? Um, and then if you don't like it anymore, you can quit. This is free. You're permitted to stop doing work for free. You don't have to do it. You can just leave. You can just piece right out, but it's nice if you kind of backfill yourself. And if you make this sheet and hand it to someone who's like, up and coming and trying to build community for whatever reason they're doing that, then they're happy too, is a great benefit. And you can just announce, goodbye, I quit, thank you. And it's okay, here's your permission to do that. Um, but you can also come back. Um, and be kind to yourself, you are people too. Um, 
if you're screwing all of this up and you forgot to put in bathroom breaks and you didn't post the recording and you didn't write your name on the paper and you didn't cross promote market, remember to fill out a form um, in time or whatever. The more important thing is returning to try another day and there is value in sustaining your effort even if it sucks a lot because people see that like my effort is not always the best um but it's okay to suck at this it's really really easy to do and i promise you i've done it a lot before i got even kind of okay at this um but like it's okay to be the world's okayest user group leader organizer participant etc um it's also okay to step away and hand off duties. Again, these types of things are like solid gold. Find somebody in marketing of the user group oriented product or whatever, hand them this sheet and peace out and go on sabbatical. It doesn't matter. They'll be fine. They'll handle it for you. <laughs> like that's my best advice. Marketers are people too. Um, it's not just ad copy. Um, it is. I, I'm sorry. I like... Uh, a lot of the work of like those people in your company who do all that stuff with people, they know people so well, they're fine babysitting these things for a while usually. Um, and that's it. Any more questions on this? Anything we talked about? Um, I'm going to post the slides. I'm going to be here in the back. So um, I'm not sure I understand the question, which is on me, but I want to understand. So where should you go if you don't want to have a formalized user group, like to just like, hang out or? So if you are like largely into the theory of the people work, but you want to continue the aspects and you don't want it. I'm struggling to ask this question. I think I get it though. Like if you just want to do work and you don't want to hang out that much and you just want to like hang out around a project or whatever? A paid job? Oh, networking is just making friends. Also, networking is just making friends. What I do, I'm on the autism spectrum. Somebody told me that like maybe 10 or 15 years ago. I took that as my job. So I will introduce myself to five people and try to have one good conversation where I talk to them for like five minutes or more. You can just set a rule for yourself. Uh, anything that's like a meetup, like you can go on meetup.com. People still use it. It is still okay. Mm -hmm. Things like this, go talk to people. Um, and it's okay to talk about like, hey, by the way, did you know that I do X, Y, or Z? Another thing that I think is useful is to pitch yourself. I am a scientist. I work on AI security. I've worked on critical infrastructure and like safety and regulated AI systems. So I do a lot of, you know, like very heavy duty controls engineering. Um, I'm looking for work. So here's my number like you can kind of think of your pitch for yourself once you get to know people but networking is just making friends like if you have if you meet five new people and have one moderately okay conversation that is more than enough that is great networking because a lot of people will go to events and they'll be like hey like like i'm dupon and you know i work at x and then just shake everybody's hand Nobody knows them after that. They don't remember that person. Like even if you meet them on LinkedIn, if you don't have an actual engagement or interaction with that person, right? So introducing yourself to like five people, you might have one that wants to continue the conversation. And then that one person where you have, you know, like five or 10 minutes conversation with, you'll get more comfortable doing it other times. It's just practice. So, um, but yeah, I was terrified of networking a lot. So, uh, any, uh, we're two minutes over time, but I'm going to still be here. So thank you all.